I love exploring different sim racing hardware options, and it's quite remarkable how fortunate we are today. The market offers a diverse range of choices, accommodating various budgets. Many manufacturers worldwide strive to create high quality sim racing peripherals that provide excellent performance at affordable prices. One such company is VNM Simulation, which is headquartered in Vietnam. VNM has grown into a diverse product lineup and will soon include even its own direct drive wheelbase. With pedals still being a prominent part of its offerings, initially they exclusively offered the VNM Pedals V1, priced at around $550. However, they have recently introduced an enticing new variant, the VNM Light Pedals. This light version aims to retain the quality and performance that VNM is known for, but comes at a slightly more affordable price point, retailing at around $400 to $450. So stick around to get all the details and my thoughts and impressions of the light pedals from VNM. Before we dive into the review, I want to clarify a few things. Firstly, I haven't had the opportunity to test the V1 pedals, so this marks my initial experience with VNM pedals. Consequently, this won't be a direct comparison to the V1s. For this review, I'm drawing from my experience with pedals from various other manufacturers. I'll be sharing my thoughts on the light pedals, focusing on aspects such as features, build quality, design, software, and adjustability. Most importantly, I'll evaluate their performance in different sim racing scenarios. It's worth noting that VNM provided me with the light pedals for this review, however I want to make it clear that all the thoughts and impressions expressed in this video are entirely my own. VNM has had no influence on the content or my opinions presented here. Now that we've got those initial details sorted, let's jump right into the review. Starting with pricing, as I mentioned earlier, a set of three light pedals which includes the throttle, brake, and clutch without a base plate will typically run you around $400 to $450 US dollars. However, it's worth noting that the actual price may vary depending on your local distributor. For instance, my preferred distributor Advanced Sim Racing lists them at $449.95 on their website currently. Additionally, you have the option to purchase a separate base plate for approximately $90, which was included with my review unit. The base plate is a nice addition, especially if your rig doesn't already have some form of a heel plate. I'll delve into the base plate and its functionality in more detail later on in the video. Now let's take a closer look at these pedals. They're built very well, with a mix of sturdy materials including powder-coated steel and anodized aluminum. The design has been streamlined compared to the V1 pedals, especially noticeable in the pedal arms, which now have some nice cutouts. I've given them a proper thrashing and there was absolutely no wobbling or issues. These things are extremely solid. Every moving part in these pedals glides smoothly thanks to the use of ball bearings. Plus, you can customize them to your liking with adjustable angle and height ensuring they're right for your driving style. The throttle and clutch pedals use contactless angle sensors for precision and longevity, and the brake pedal boasts a hefty 200kg load cell. The set also includes a controller box that looks and feels top notch. It's got this robust housing and high quality screw-in connections for each pedal. You wouldn't guess that these pedals cost less than $500. They absolutely scream quality and craftsmanship. Kudos to VNM. When I unboxed them, I was instantly struck by how sleek and premium they looked and felt. The all black finish with colorful rubber end stops and the red and blue springs on the brake pedal gives them a stylish yet understated vibe. They'll fit right in with most people's setups. It's clear that VNM takes build quality seriously when it comes to these pedals, and it definitely pays off in the final product. These pedals come loaded with all the adjustments you'd expect to find on high end gear. What sets them apart is the brake pedal, which boasts an impressive 200kg load cell, way more strength than most of us can muster. Out of the box, they're pre-installed with two springs and a soft elastomer, which gives them a comfortable road car feel. This setup felt natural and allowed for smooth trail braking. However, the beauty of these pedals lies in their flexibility. You can easily tweak them to your liking by experimenting with different combinations of elastomers and springs. Getting that race car feel is a breeze with a few adjustments. For instance, I immediately increased the throttle preload to add a bit more resistance. It just felt too light initially, and I prefer a firmer throttle for better modulation. 
I also shortened the throw on the throttle, which is something I typically do with any set of pedals I test. Personal preference, of course. Making these changes is straightforward. You just loosen the rubber bump stop, move it and tighten it back up. The clutch can be fine tuned to your liking as well, adjusting preload and bite point. Out of the box, the clutch felt a bit too light and easy to depress, so I adjusted it for a stronger and more realistic feel. Most of these adjustments are similar to what you find on other pedals in the market and usually involve using an Allen key and adjusting bolts. Although I do wish more companies followed Asetek's example by including toolless adjustment knobs. In reality though, most users set their pedals once and don't fuss with them again. One small critique I have is that I prefer a slightly larger brake pedal plate. It felt a bit small under my size 10 feet. However, I believe that someone will likely create aftermarket faces for this down the line making it a non-issue for most users. You've got a few options when it comes to mounting these pedals to your rig. Firstly, you can directly attach them to your pedal plate, provided it has the necessary holes to support these pedals. Even better, if you have a pedal plate with aluminum profiles, it's incredibly easy to mount them by utilizing the slots on the pedals themselves. The third option is to use VNM's optional base plate, which was included with my review set. This approach simplifies the mounting process for a wide range of rigs. With the base plate, you attach the pedals directly to it, and then it's just a matter of securing it in each corner. What's particularly handy about this setup is that it comes with an integrated heel plate, offering ample adjustability in terms of angle and height. This not only allows you to fine tune your driving position for maximum comfort, but also comes in handy if your rig lacks a separate heel plate. I found it exceptionally convenient when mounting the set to my Six Sigma 6S 120 test rig. To top it off, all the necessary mounting hardware, including Allen keys, is included with the pedals, so everything you need for installation is right there in the box, making the setup process hassle-free. Once the pedals were securely mounted, the next course of action involved installing VNM's drivers and software, and fine-tuning the pedal calibration for accuracy. While the software may not be the flashiest, it performs its essential functions pretty seamlessly and makes the task quite straightforward. In addition to its core functionality, the software offers the flexibility to choose various presets, define dead zone settings, and fine tune your pedal calibration among other features. Reviewing sim racing pedals has always been a bit of a challenge for me. Adapting to a new set of pedals can be a real test of muscle memory. Still, I dedicated a significant amount of time to using these pedals to truly grasp their capabilities and their shortcomings. It didn't take long for me to become consistent with them and after several laps I found myself genuinely enjoying them. In fact, these have become one of my favorite sets that I've tried recently. I've come to prefer these over the SimForge pedals I recently reviewed, as they feel like a more polished and well-crafted product. They're easier to adjust and mount, making them a practical choice for any sim racing setup. If you told me I could only use these pedals, I'd be perfectly content. They're highly capable and offer a fantastic driving experience. Now it's essential to clarify that I wouldn't replace my Heusenfeld Ultimate Plus pedals with these, but that's not a completely fair comparison. However, when comparing them to the Heusenfeld Sprint or Asetek Forte pedals for example, these VNM light pedals present a highly compelling option at a very attractive price point. You're getting a very well-made pedal set with plenty of adjustments, stellar performance, accuracy, and outstanding build quality. I always emphasize to new sim racers that investing in good pedals early on is one of the smartest decisions they can make. Pedals play a pivotal role in your consistency and immersion, and their importance should not be underestimated. The VNM Lite pedals offer everything you need from a mid-range pedal set, packaged in a well-executed and simply effective design. Do you have any questions or thoughts to share about these pedals? Feel free to drop them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to engage with you. If you enjoyed the review or found it helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button. It really does help grow the channel. Consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified when I drop another video. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy your racing.